Hello students, today's video is on graphing electromagnetic waves. This is the video that is due for Unit 1, Day 7. So electromagnetic waves, you'll notice that there are two words in here that are important, electro and magnetic. And the reason for this is electromagnetic waves actually include both an electrical portion and a magnetic portion. And these two portions move perpendicularly to each other. So you can see right here that the uh, electric field is moving up and down. So this one moves up and down. And the magnetic field is moving forwards and backwards. So our blue magnetic field is going forwards and backwards. So those are perpendicular to each other, um, which means that they are at right angles to each other, um, or they make a T-shape. Um, overall, though, even though this one's going up and down, and this one is going forwards and backwards, together they end up all moving to the right. Um, so the way that we simplify this is just to use one wave like this um, that we've seen. It looks very similar to a transverse wave, um, but it's much easier to simplify it and just draw it as a single wave. So there are two important parts of an electromagnetic wave that you need to know about. Um, they should already be pretty familiar to you. So if we have our simplified version of our <coughs> um, graph, and this is our equilibrium, equilibrium. We know that from equilibrium to the crest or from equilibrium to the trough that this is what's called the amplitude. Okay, so both of these are amplitudes. <coughs> both this one and this one. And amplitude when we're talking about <laughs> electromagnetic waves is related to the intensity or how bright something is, especially if we're talking about visible light. So when we're talking about our colors, Amplitude has everything to do with how bright our colored light is. <coughs> <coughs> Lastly, another one that's important is wavelength, which is just the distance from crust to crust. So we've been talking about all the different electromagnetic waves. So there's radio, um, we've got microwave, we've got um, infrared, we've got visible, we've got U ultraviolet light, um, x-rays, and gamma rays. And so radio waves have the longest wavelength, so they have the longest distance between crusts, whereas gamma rays have very short wavelengths in between crusts. So for example, like this, they have very short wavelengths. So we're going to do four different examples, imagining if we have bright red light. So here's my equilibrium for my reds, and then we're going to talk about violet as well. So let's change our color to violet. Um, so here's our violet light. Um, and remember that when we are talking about our colors, Roy, G, Biv, that red was always the longer wavelength and violet was always the shorter wavelength. So when I draw these, um, red light is going to be pretty long, whereas violet light is going to be pretty short. Um, so, for example, red light is around um, 700 nanometers long, whereas violet light is around 400 nanometers long. Um, so this, for example, we're going to call this the bright red light, and we're going to call this the bright violet light. So if we were trying to dim it down, I would just shorten the height of it. So this right here would be dim because it's much shorter than this one. And same down here, to do dim violet light, we would shorten the wave. So again, they're still doing the same pattern, but since these ones are much shorter, they're going to be much dimmer, whereas these one with the big amplitudes will be much brighter. That's it for today. Make sure you take your notes. I believe your notes should go on page 13. See you later.